This broadcast from IOF TV is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite. Welcome to southern France and the city of Saint-Maximin-la-Sainte-Baume, which is uh, located uh, around 40 kilometers northeast of Marseille. Uh, you can see here at the venue that uh, the participants are preparing for today's race, the Sprint Relay, the French Championships in Sprint Relay. Sprint relay. And, uh, the city of uh, saint maxima la saint -Bum. consists of a very nice old town. Uh, it's located in the Provence and is also the host of the biggest church here, the Marie Magdalene uh, Church, uh, who is said actually to be buried here in this city, Marie Magdalene. Uh, but coming from religious topics back to the less religious orienteering topics and the big big question that we will answer today will is there a team that can break the streak of uh, asia exo provence with three titles in a row so uh, they are definitely among the favorites today and i can promise you we will have uh, quite a challenging and uh, a bit a different kind of sprint relay course today. The course planners really tried anything to make this uh, competition as interesting as possible. They struggled a little bit because they were not allowed to have the competition area in the city center. Um, so they had to be a little bit outside in this sports area with a lot of uh, sports building or sports complex here. Uh, but they solved it in a, a special way and I'm sure we will get to see that later on when we have the course preview. But you can see here the runners for the first leg are warming up and it is a club championship. Um, uh, it's a bit different when we will look at the favorites and at the team members here again the city of uh, saint maximin la saint baume you can see where it is located and you see the map here with the old town center to the south you can see it very good and this sports complex to the northeast and here you already get a glimpse of what i was talking about before uh, it will be interesting today because we have this kind of maze where each runner will go into twice actually right after the start and then right after the spectator control so here we have the perspective from above you see those many many controls uh, it will go into each of the mazes twice so the first time right after the start which leads to the possibility that you can have more forkings because you will enter each uh, area twice um, something similar actually for you who follow uh, most of our competitions that we had in Cheska Lipa at the sprint relay there with this starting area with different uh, where we were twice with different forkings then from this maze uh, after being there the first time we will head out to this small park quite easy open orienteering at control six the first tv control and then we will enter the old town the old city center which is more this classic kind of sprint orienteering we are used to many left right decisions forkings planned in a way that you should be punished if you follow the wrong runner to the wrong forking i'm not sure if it works in every of the possibilities but mostly it works so quite interesting bit here 
and a very big change in uh, technique and execution compared to the park and maze part in the very beginning. Uh, the women, if you look at the course, they will have a shortcut here from control 12 to 16. Uh, so they won't do this small loop in between. From 16, heading back again to control 17, TV control. Uh, another control in this park, very easy, shouldn't be a prob problem for the runners. But of course, it's very tempting to uh, increase your speed at this part and maybe overdo it a little bit. So here we get another idea of the terrain. And then from control 18 to 19, uh, the last control before the second time in the maze. And you can see it here. So 19 to 20, and then you also have the controls uh, 26, 27. So you will do that maze, the second one, first time, then go to control 22, have another short loop, start all over again in the first maze, go straight into the second maze, and then out of the mazes towards the change over. So you're, tw you're twice in these areas right after start and right after the uh, spectator control and uh, of course you also have a map flip at the spectator control in order to make it a bit a, a little bit uh, better readable here and then 28 29 rather easy control to the changeover It's a uh, from the warm up area. Uh, it is so you have to make a lot of money. You have to get a lot of to uh, follow sprint relays in the World Cup where we have four runners and all of them are uh, very, very talented and very fast. Of course, we have talented runners today as well, but the difference between the runners would definitely be more than the 30 seconds we are used to from the World Cup. So uh, I expect it to be uh, more changes in this kind of competition. And here you can see the maze, uh, the first one to the right and the second one to the left. And then uh, you also get a glimpse of the old town in the background up to the right uh, and the small park in between. Uh, you can see also that the not so many fences built up here. The course planners they didn't want to overdo it because it should be readable on the map and you should be it should be possible to put those fences out at the right place um, and if you have too many and too complicated kind of uh, structure in the maze that would be impossible also I think it's quite a good decision because uh, it's right after the start and we have uh, 63 teams starting today so it will be quite a mess uh, to the first control at least but as we've seen before there are many different controls many different options uh, and a lot of space in between the fences of 
corners. Uh, I've seen a uh, few experienced runners warming up here. I could spot uh, Mael Bouvier. Uh, we know from the World Cup many of these other athletes running the first leg or any other leg are maybe not that used to sprint relays because you're usually on the national level. You don't get the possibility for running a sprint relay too often. And it is definitely something different if you're uh, in a head-to-head -head sprint uh, competition compared to an individual sprint. You can see it here. This is this church I was talking about. The biggest church in the Provence. And the beautiful old town. I can also uh, see that the weather is quite fine. If you were uh, observative uh, at the warm up, you could spot that most of the runners wearing short, ar short arm. Uh, shirts and shorts so it seems to be quite warm as well beautiful conditions for a competition like this uh, we have approximately four minutes to the start now So very soon we will have these runners lining up behind their maps. You can see that they actually already have the maps rolled up in their hands. We have uh, maybe the biggest uh, favorite for the first leg. Uh, we had our individual very shortly, Mail Bouvier. Uh, we have other interesting names running the first leg here as well. Alina Balcao, uh, Lucine Goudillon, Fanny Delay, Juliette Bassé, and Lucie Latast, uh, just to name a few of them. Uh, but as I mentioned, the difference on the level here between the runners, uh, quite big. Here you have the maybe biggest favorites or a few of them lined up after the start numbers. Um, the defending champions, as I said, three times in a row. Uh, see uh, Aix-en-Provence uh, starting with Diane Hubert. And uh, maybe the biggest challenge here to keep in contact and don't lose too much on the first leg for Diane Hubert because uh, after her we have really strong runners coming and you can also spot that a few of the names you're definitely familiar with here uh, Cécile Galondry running the last leg for Annecy um, uh, Mathieu Perrin for example running for Saint-Étienne or then the legend in uh, uh, François Gonon, uh, medalist uh, in 2011 uh, over the long distance though. And yes, I said 2011, a few years ago. Uh, there are other strong teams as well. Uh, we have it on the list here. Uh, for example, a team with uh, Maxime Roturier, Gonta Roturier, and uh, Josephine Schandlund, uh, so a Swedish runner on the last leg. Uh, they will have uh, Lucille Roger uh, on the first leg. You can see it here with start number eight. Uh, also a very, very strong team.
And then uh, to name one special thing here in this relay as well, there are three teams uh, called France 1, 2 and 3. It's t uh, teams consisting of runners who have not four um, competitors in their team, so runners who couldn't make it to the start line if there wouldn't be these combined teams. Here we have her, uh, Alina Palkao, one of the favorites maybe for this uh, first leg. And now we have the start and you can see a difference here in the running speed right away. Uh, they heading out now and uh, right from the start they will head into this first maze. You can see quite many spectators here, of course, it's a club championships. They had different competitions here throughout the week, uh, among others the Middle Distance Championships and the Club Relay Championships, so in uh, Forest Orienteering yesterday. But today we will focus on the Sprint Relay and you can see that a few of the favorite teams already lined up here at the very top of the field. We see it from above, very nice picture. With this overhead camera, you can see that they're splitting up. We have four different options. And uh, you can see why it is quite good that they have a lot of space in between the fences. There are many runners heading out on this first leg. And it is quite messy. The route choices. I mean, there are route choices. You have to be uh, observative. Uh, mostly, I think you have to be careful to end up at the right control um, because you won't win or lose so much time here. But it forces you to focus on the map right away. It's not a very comfortable situation for the runners. Uh, not very often that we have these kind of mazes. I remember that there was one at the European Championships. Uh, in Switzerland, in Neuchâtel, at the football stadium, just before the finish. And here we have the first teams coming out from the maze. Mael Bovier among one of the leading teams here. Now we're waiting uh, at the exit of this small park. You can see that the runners entering it now. Uh, if I'm right, then uh, uh, I can tell you that I saw Anne is up there. Ushura. Azul. BLCO, that's the team with uh, Mael Bovier. Those are the four leading teams. So we have it, Alina Palkao for ASO. Just ahead of uh, Ushura and uh, in third position Floros Anauer. So a uh, familiar name in international orienteering as is uh, Lia Vercelotti. We had there uh, on the list as well for a short while. And then many, many of the teams following here. And now we are entering the old town. As we are following uh, Lina Palkao, already had a very good leg on the first uh, leg in the sprint relay last year. You can see that the streets here are very narrow. Mm. 
makes it a bit difficult for the connection, as you can feel. Uh, on the way to control 8 now, which is a forked control. And on the left you see Mail Bouvier. Or BLCO on these different options towards control eight and nine, then ah, here you can see almost at the same time, didn't really make a difference if you went to the left or to the right. You can see the GPS here. Many of the dots disappeared a little bit in the narrow streets. So this is an unforked bit towards control 10. Actually this uh, first leg, uh, they will go unforked back to the small park now from here. No, co no problems for Mael Bouvier at uh, control 11. You could see that uh, Balcao had a little bit of struggle, almost, almost overshot the control. Now they will head back to the park. You can see here the running time for Bouvier. 7 minutes and 40 seconds. She really has to make a big difference here because the runners following her. Maybe on the paper. Not as promising as in other teams. Here she comes, entering the park again to the second radio control. Yeah, could spot the control now, a small hesitation. Small uh, mistake there for Silpalgao. And now Bouvier will run back towards the exit of the park and towards the second maze. So here she is entering the football pitch.
can see that you have to be very careful in order to not be on the wrong side of the fence. Uh, it's hard to figure out when you just look at the map. You can see many, many spectators. It's very good located here because the spectators can switch between the two mazes. And here the other group exiting the second maze. Uh, not uh, very well prepared here, the whole group. You have them again in the picture. Now they're heading out uh, second time. So they had this run through. Uh, and we'll go into the first maze again as they were just after the start and then from this first straight into the second maze and then to the changeover so the teams we have here BLCO with Emile Bouvier ASO with uh, Alina Palcao. Uh, we also have Oshura in this group, Alice Mera. The question, where is uh, Asia Aix-en-Provence, the three times winner? Keep an eye on that. And you can see it is tricky. Doesn't allow you to go uh, full speed at any time here, this maze. Emile Bouvier will hand over to Adrien Frade on the second leg. Coming here. This is the third last control. You can see it is, is the group behind chasing Bovir. Assisting of uh, three other teams right at the end here. We had uh, uh, Azu Ansi. Now Bouvier and BLCO on the way to the last control and the changeover. Very good first leg as expected for Mael Bouvier. Of course, that was the job he had to do. Uh, as I said before, not the favorites on the paper on the coming legs. But this is a good first leg for Mael Bouvier. And you can see the time, just under 15 minutes. So good uh, 
calculated by the, co by the course planner as well. And uh, she sends out uh, Adrien Frade. And let's see how big the gap is compared to the other teams. Other teams coming to the finish. I think that uh, Alina Palcao is changing over as well to Rafael Maslia. And let me see here, try to figure out from the GPS who the other teams are. We have uh, Ushura. And there we're going to have uh, Clément Ponce. And we also have Azul. And there we're going to have on the second leg Julia Vito. now uh, how far behind will Asia Aix-en-Provence be after his first leg because uh, there we're gonna follow uh, Mattia Barovaye on the second leg You can see it here, you can see that the chasing teams, they are just going out from the maze. Uh, Aizu with uh, Maslia. And uh, Azul with Bichard. So waiting here at the first control, we had uh, Adrien Frade punching here 20 seconds ago. And we have one, two, three, four teams following. Let's see. Uh, CUBF, Conta Uno. Struggles a bit with the times there. Trying to figure from the GPS who the other teams w were. We had uh, Aizu, Azul and Ushura. So we had uh, Rafael Maslia. We had uh, Romain Pichard. And we also had Clément Ponce at this second radio control. Oh, there's someone coming back here. Maybe just going around uh, the wrong way. Maxime Routurier, 123 behind. That's interesting. As we follow Adrien Frade, still in the lead through the old town. Uh, 
look at the GPS and can tell you that uh, they are splitting up. Ushura going all the way to the left. Azul and Azul. Keeping it to the right. Uh, it's a forked control, so that's a good sign. At least for Ushura. here at control 10 and I think we are following behind uh, Rafael Maslia of Azo and C can see the different runners here uh, on the last control in the old town. Back with Frade. I think the gap isn't very, very big anymore. See how it will develop. My feeling is that the teams chasing are getting closer and closer. And uh, of course, here you can see it compared to the women. Uh, they have this extra loop after control 12, where the women went to 16. They are heading down again to control 13, taking another loop here. And you can see that the gap now with the 20 second tail between uh, BLCO uh, and especially. Uh, I saw with Maslia isn't very big anymore. They took different route choices there. And you can also see that the uh, Roturier for GO78, very, very much closer. He was more than a minute behind at the first radio control. And uh, just behind him, Asia. Uh, the defending champions trying, of course, to take advantage of this very, very good back. But um, this is going to be an interesting one because G078, as I mentioned in the beginning, very strong finish with uh, two times uh, Routurier and uh, Josephine Schanlund. Frade, quite careful around the corner. And uh, soon we we'll leave, leave the old town again. You can see that he is looking back. No, usually not the very best sign. Yeah, you can see here. 
Here they are together. So now we have uh, two runners in front. Uh, it's BLCO and it is ISO ANSI. Adria Frade and uh, Rafael Maslia. And then we also have Azul with um, Romain Pichard. The next one to come here, uh, Ushura. And then there's a runner without a GPS. So uh, Clément Ponce. can see that many of the runners did this small mistake when they were running the wrong way around the bushes here. Here we have another view of the GPS. You can see the teams uh, named there to the left. As they are heading into this maze for the second time. Still, we have it. PLCO, Azul, ISO among the leading teams here. Uh, Rafael Maslia in the picture. So you see the three teams here, it is uh, Maslia, Bichard and Frade. Thank you. 
And we are waiting for more teams to come. Of course, at this point, you have uh, teams heading to the second time into the maze, so at the map flip, and you have the teams uh, heading towards uh, the changeover. Uh, so we have this three teams here, very soon to change. And see, let me see. Uh, Rafael Masilia will send out Antoine Pecard. Azul uh, will hand over to Hugo Wexler. And you can see here the change of the changing teams, of the chasing teams. They are heading into this maze for the first time. You can see that uh, there are quite many runners still in this because, uh, of course, we have the runners from the second leg being here for the second time. You can see here uh, Azul with uh, Waxler, Bilso with, with uh, Leduc. And uh, Bigger for us, or the three uh, leading teams. And then behind, interesting, Asia uh, with uh, Dulen, quite close, getting closer and closer. So let's see, they're coming to the first radio control, first time here. Ah, here's the control, that's uh, Azul, uh, Hugo Wexler, Anton, Antoine Bigger in second position. And here, Adrien Dulen. Uh, so now we have uh, Asia very close to the lead again. Only 12 or 13 seconds behind. And this should be GO78 with uh, Gontard Roturier. Very close now as well, so I would say that we have five teams in the top. ISO, BLCO, Azul, ASEA and GO78.
So we are following behind the uh, SO. And now uh, behind Azul. And the big question basically is if the teams behind, uh, the ones we had just a few meters behind, uh, Asia and the uh, Geo78, if they are able to get in contact again. Looks good here for Hugo Wexler. Try to take a look at the GPS. I can see that uh, it seems as if we have four teams together right now. You can see it up there. I saw BLCU, Azul, and a little bit behind Geo78. All heading down now to this uh, middle section. Uh, the additional loop that we didn't have in the women's leg. You can see that no one is choosing to go to the right all the way around. That's good. To control 13 of them somewhere in between there. And this is Adrien Dulen for the defending champions. Yeah, you can see the struggles with sprint orienteering in Citrix, where you have part, parked uh, cars every now and then. And uh, my feeling is actually that he has a gap now for, uh, let's say, about 10 to 15 seconds. Interesting. Of course, he's trying now to push very hard in order to get... Uh, the gap growing as big as possible. It's very hard to uh, uh, struggle a bit with this one as well. Coming here. Let's see if he is going to the right side of the bush. Yes, indeed. So, Adrien Dulen, how big is the gap? Keep the watch here. So, here we have the two following teams, uh, Azul and ASO. And they are 10 and 11 seconds behind. And what is the gap down to uh, GO78 coming here? Quentin Routurier, uh, 23 seconds behind. I 
think it looks as if it was between those teams here. Uh, back with Adrien Dulen for Asia. Heading uh, into the maze and uh, missing the entrance almost. Uh, you can see that the camera person had a better entrance there. And it's, it's hard to say uh, if you can lose so much time here because the running speed is not really, really uh, high here. You have to make so many turns can't never really run full speed. You can't really uh, take advantage of the runner in front of you because uh, most likely has another forking. But, uh, looks good here. It's kind of the ski orienteering technique you have to use. Keep uh, your plan in mind and then decide left or right all the time. Exiting this first uh, Mace and uh, heading over to the map flip and the cap uh, before 10 seconds how big is it now uh, I saw coming here nine seconds so still about the same Hugo Vaxiller Azul and definitely closer now Quentin Roturier 17 seconds so we have 9, 12 and 17 seconds for the chasing teams uh, with the defending champions RCA from Aix-en-Provence in the lead. We are waiting for the next team, team number 5. Coming here, team that was in the lead for quite a long time in the beginning, BLC. And here again, uh, back with Dulen, back with the leader. You can see that the other runners also entered the maze. Ah. Some collision here. You could think that there is enough space. If we look uh, to the next changeover, we will have uh, Adrien Dulen handing over to Annabelle Dulen. Uh, we will have uh, ISO, Juan Becker, handing over to Cécile Galandry. Very interesting there. Uh, Gio78, Guyancourt, handing over Quentin Routurier to Josephine Shandlund. So this is a very interesting name to see here at the French Championships. And Azul uh, Hugo Vaxler will hand over to Isia Basse. So very uh, well-known names here then on the last leg. Uh, as we have Adrien Dulen coming here. Uh, that was Azu, and here we have uh, Geo78 Guyancourt and also Azul. So the four teams all punched and now on their way to the second last and last control and cha last changeover of this competition. So this is the leader, the first one to hand over from the third to the last leg. Adrien Dulen will send out Annabelle Dulen uh, in just a few seconds.
And interesting to see now how big is the gap. It has been 9 seconds, it's more now. 11 seconds, so not uh, the difference not very big. 14 seconds for uh, Routourie, he's definitely closer. And the 19 seconds for Hugo Vaxler. He dropped a little bit behind. So now we are here behind uh, Cécile Galandry on the last leg. And we also have Annabelle Delen, Josephine Schanlund, and Isia Basset. You can see it. The gap uh, was around uh, 11 seconds at the changeover. Yes, small, small hesitation for Galantry. There to the left, you could see uh, Annabelle Dulen. Still a few meters ahead. And now on the way. Leaving this uh, maze for the first time. You can see that we actually have different route choices to this fourth control. Uh, Dulan went to the right. And Galantry as Jean Lund to the left. So Isia Basset to the left. see that we have a few forkings here in this park. Uh, they won't be very decisive, I guess. Quite obvious. But of course you have to be uh, observative. And here they come. So no clear leader at the moment. You can see that uh, Galandry. Ava, oh no, they're hesitating. So still Dulen in the lead. Just punching before Galantry and Shanlund. And then a few seconds behind, 11 seconds behind, Isia Bassi. All lined up beside each other here. Dulen, Galantry and Schernlund. And now Schernlund in the lead uh, for the first time in this competition. Uh, Geo 78, Goyancourt in the lead. You can also see that they are splitting up again, as they have been doing throughout the whole competition, almost. Of course, depending on different forking as well.
So we have uh, Shanlund in running direction going to the right. All the other teams going more to the left. Or to the east. And if you have control D, the one uh, of control 8 more to the west, then of course it's very good to go all the way around as Shanlund if you have the other one. Um, then it's a good thing to go the other way. And uh, Shandlund seems to be still in the lead. You can see that in Canlondry's picture, you can actually see the camera person and Shandlund in front, so the gap is not very big. So you can see now that uh, due to the fact that uh, Galandry could see the back, she could uh, just win back meter by meter. And there's now just a few meters behind Sharon You can see that uh, different route choices to control 11. Haven't seen so much of uh, Bassi and Dulen in the picture, but they're not so far behind. And uh, again, not this second loop. They don't have the second loop into the city as we had before in the man's course. So it will be interesting to get the time at control 14. Getting down the stairs here, so let's see how big the gap is. Punching there. Uh, the gap between the two, four seconds. And the other teams not far behind, 13 seconds for Dulen and uh, 16 seconds for Basse. So now it's uh, only this park bit left and then the two times heading into this maze. So now it is uh, very exciting here in this maze. Uh, who's gonna take it? You can see different route choices to this control. And they're all together again, head to head against each other. Cecile Galandry for ISO. 
And Josephine Shandon for Guyancourt. Mm. Different route choices here again and different results. Now punching this control here, the one we know very well from the other legs. And how big is the gap? Uh, four seconds still. Uh, this is Dulan. 15 seconds behind. Lost two more seconds. And uh, they have the map flip now, getting into this very last bit. Uh, still, Shandlund in the lead with Galantry just a few meters behind, splitting up two different routes, two different controls, maybe. Ah! Good route choice there by Galantry. So we're here now uh, into this very, very last bit. Unfortunately, we got uh, information about the mispunch for uh, Guyancourt. So maybe uh, not as exciting as we think it is. It is Cécile Galantry uh, in the lead here. Uh, but uh, it looks like a mispunch for Gontin Roturier on the third leg. So as it seems from the results here, uh, it is definitely Galantry in the lead and one other, one other. Uh, a bit sad message for Azul. Also there we have a mispunch on the second leg so uh, you can think for a fight here between Galantry and Dulen for the victory at the championships. as they are heading out from the maze now and towards the third and then second last control. Uh, you have them here. Here's Dulen, uh, so second in this competition and just behind her Basse, but also Basse's team uh, has a mispunch on the second leg. So let's focus on the leader, let's focus on Cécile Galandry. Uh, actually the one with the team without the mispunch. Uh, how far behind is Shanlon? You can see her in the background. So it would be a very good thing if she would take it home anyway without the struggles with the results. Punching the last control there and now on the way to the victory for ASU and C. Uh, Alina Palcao, Rafael Maslia, Antoine Becard on the last meters taking this uh, French Championships title to Ansi and second place or second in the finish but not second place for Guyancourt that mispunched on the third leg. Um, 
And uh, we are waiting for the third team to the finish and the bronze medalist. Uh, it is a fight here between Bassi and Dulan, but it is Dulan who is taking the actually silver medal. So um, third into the finish, maybe fourth into the finish, but definitely a silver medal for uh, Asia and uh, Annabelle Dulan. Uh, running together with uh, Diane Hubert, Matthias Barros Valle, Adrien Dulen. So, silver for them. And let's see which team's gonna be the third team, the bronze medalist, so the fifth team to the finish. Uh, I think it is. Uh, Saint Etienne that was in the pole position for that. Let's see, it looks like it is uh, Besançon uh, right now. <laughs> so we have uh, Justine. Pellissier for Saint-Etienne and we have Diffen Moulet for, for Besançon. And they're still in the first maze of the second loop as we see the winners here. And those, uh, the silver medalists. Uh, but uh, maybe let's focus back on the fight for the bronze. Uh, you can see it here. It looks, it seems to be uh, Moulet for Besançon. Uh, but we also have uh, Doué, D.A.D. in the fight. So let's see here. Uh, we see that uh, Tiffen Moulet on the way. Uh, on the way to the second last control here, and this looks like a bronze position. So let's see here, at least it's a team uh, without a miss punch getting to the finish very soon. I don't know if she is aware of the fact. Uh, that she is going to take the bronze medal here. Hope she won't take it too easy. To the last control and the finish. She is chased by other teams, but it looks very good for the team from from Besançon. Uh, so Tiffen Moulet into the finish, uh, taking her colors to the bronze medal at this championships, running together with uh, Lea Vercelotti, Thomas Kuriger. Uh, Jérôme Bouchon and uh, last leg Diffen Moulet. I haven't seen so much of her throughout the course, uh, focusing on the other teams. Unfortunately, two miss punches by Guyancourt and uh, Azul, making this fight a little bit less uh, intense as compared to what we expected. Uh, next team to the finish, uh, Saint Etienne, Justine Pellissier. Uh, more a bit more than uh, four minutes, four and a half minutes behind. Uh, we also had uh, the AD. Uh, Roxanne Florent, you can see now the updated result list. So, uh, gold medal to ISO, silver medal to 
Asia and the bronze to Besançon UTB. And then another team uh, with a mispunch to the finish. I guess that the problems occur in this maze part where you have so many controls and you have to be very, very careful in order to get to the right control. Of course, as always, you should double check the code at the control. So as you can see it here, the problem for Azul occurred on the second leg and the mispun for Guyancourt uh, on the third leg, uh, Conta Roturier. But uh, to summarize the competition a little bit, uh, I would actually have expected the competition to turn a little bit more than it did. Uh, it was very consistent, uh, thinking about the fact that it was a uh, national championships. Of course, we had uh, uh, Rive in the lead uh, in the beginning, BLCO, with Mail Bouvier, and uh, they fell a little bit behind later on and we also had a few teams being far behind in the beginning thinking about um, Asia for example a 120 behind at the first changeover and also Guyancourt uh, a minute behind at the first changeover but otherwise uh, we had a few teams consistently in the lead throughout the whole competition. Of course, the gaps between the teams Getting bigger and bigger as for the down the result list we get. I was talking about that before. It's a national championships. You don't only have runners training full time or almost full time for these kind of competitions. You have also quite many teams that have uh, one or two runners from uh, maybe 18 years or younger, or then some older runners from the men or women 40 classes uh, if you don't have enough elite runners in your club and of course if you then compete against runners with international class you drop quite far behind time wise in the result list good sprint here for the 16th position between uh, another team from Saint-Étienne and Adoc. Ah oui, désolé. Euh, mais il y a encore besoin de moi là à l'arrivée ou pas Thank <laughs> you. 
Mm. So uh, here we can take another look at the GPS replay of the fourth leg. You can see that quite big um, gaps between the teams. Uh, now the teams mispunching at earlier legs. Um, not in this comparison. You can see something at the end a bit further down, approximately uh, one and a half, two minutes. And the two teams, Asia and ISO, almost same route choices here, to eight. Hard to say which of the options they had here. Then different route choices, and here is where we could see that the uh, ISO got away a little bit running together. Uh, Cecile Galandry with uh, Shanland, Josephine Shanland at this part, um, and Asia just a little bit behind, chasing all the way. But already here, the gap was a little bit too big. I mentioned it before. Uh, in this maze, of course, you can lose and win back a few meters all the time. But second-wise, it's not a very big difference. So it's very interesting if you really had to head, as we've seen it, uh, between uh, Galandry and Jan Lund. But of course, if you have 15 seconds in between, the risk of losing it is not very, very big. And it looks very easy and calm here. But uh, of course, we didn't have the action of the head to head as it was in real for the competitors. They didn't know that the other teams had mispunched before. And then it was a fight for the bronze there behind between Saint Etienne, uh, Besançon, and TAD. And you can see that uh, Saint Etienne dropped behind in the first maze, proving me wrong with what I said before. And uh, Besançon taking the lead out from the second maze towards the finish, securing this uh, bronze medal. Uh, Defend Moulet was run running this last leg. So here we have it again. You can see that uh, the defending champions from uh, Aix-en-Provence in second position, 120 behind after the first leg. And also Besançon already 1 and 10 behind. So there were quite uh, big gaps in this competition, if you look at it here. But of course, we have uh, lost a few teams there in the top, mispunching. But uh, if you look at it for Aix-en-Provence, uh, the change over to the men, really, really successful. Uh, Mathia Barrault-Vaille and Adrien Dulen with great performances there on the second and third leg. Le, le top 10, même le top 20 de ces championnats de France.
Victoire pour ASO, MC, Sport Orientation, médaille d'argent pour la Calex en Provence et troisième place pour euh, OTV Besançon. Et ensuite dans le top 10, on a le TAD, le NOD, Gosson 18, Opa, Avignon, Jura, Stasimut Doué, Balise 25. Et enfin le top 20, Assul Villarban 2, Akex en Provence, le TAD 3, Cops, une équipe groupe France qui du coup ne comptera pas, le NOS, la DOC. OTB, le Cox, Eco 73 et Vervin Orientation. Le Vervin qui est bien ramené en top 20. C'est des emmenons. So here we have uh, the winners in the pictures. To the right, Aisu and the silver medalist to the left. see it was very important for ANSI to get a good start uh, with uh, Alina Balgao only four seconds behind uh, she changed over to Rafael Maslia and this is a team that has been uh, in the top four almost the whole competition And uh, Besançon taking the bronze medal, and maybe a bit uh, surprisingly for themselves as well, being uh, four minutes behind and with quite many teams in between, but they were mispunching as we know. Écoute. Oui, il y avait un homme blessé, balise 4. Ok, c'est parti. Les sports. Avec un peu d'entraînement, on peut tous pratiquer un sport plus responsable. Gérer les déchets sur les événements, réduire leur empreinte carbone, donner une seconde vie aux équipements sportifs. Avec son programme Sport Planète, Maïf s'engage pour que le sport soit meilleur aussi pour la santé de la planète. Découvrez le programme. Agir ensemble pour un sport plus responsable, c'est ça, être assureur militant aujourd'hui. Maïf, assureur militant. Here you can see the top three teams of today with the winners from ISU. Uh, silver medal goes to Asia, Exxon Provence to the defending champions and uh, the bronze medal to Besançon. You can see the runners there lined up. Uh, very uh, important as mentioned before for the winners to get a good start uh, with Alina Palcao. And uh, then they were up there in the lead. The men could follow with the group. Uh, were up there all the time. And of course, if you have a very strong runner as uh, Cécile Calandry on the last leg, then you have good chances to win. 
competition like this. A bit surprising, as mentioned before, the bronze medal to Besançon. Uh, defend Moule on the last leg there. Saving uh, this bronze medal for uh, Besançon. And uh, with his pictures, I think we have really closed the broadcast here. Tu les as en inter... Tu mal à Enjoy ou pas? these championships. Ah, ok, d'accord. Et eh ben, hop, je vais prendre les premiers. Ah, si, venez voir pour le. Restez là, restez sur le podium, Anne. Restez sur le podium. Live channel. So have a nice Monday afternoon and uh, bye bye. Pour le direct. Allez, avec euh, le club d'Annecy, donc euh, vainqueur de. <rire> De ce, de ce championnat de France. Bravo, bravo messieurs, dames. Deux courses, deux victoires sur ces... Euh, on ne s'arrête plus, on s'arrête plus. Un petit mot d'abord avec toi Alina, euh, la première relayeuse. Bah, J'ai essayé de... <rire> Ça marche là. <rire> Ça a bien marché quoi. J'ai essayé de, de rester dans le paquet de devant. Après, euh, ça a été dommage parce que j'ai fait euh, un peu un capouillage euh, au changement de carte. Et sinon, bah, j'ai fait le taf euh, comme il fallait, je pense. Un petit mot ensuite, c'était Raph, Raph Massilla qui a donné ce deuxième relais. Euh, on t'a senti très costaud aujourd'hui. Ben, j'ai pas voulu prendre de risques. Je savais que j'avais une équipe super solide derrière et avec moi. Du coup, euh, je suis pas un sprint spécialiste, mais j'ai essayé de limiter la casse et je suis rentré avec le groupe de devant. Du coup, euh, voilà, c'était bien. Une très belle course pour, pour toi, Antoine. Il y a, derrière, il fallait juste faire le job. Ouais, bah c'est un peu ça. Euh, globalement, je, bon, je me doutais qu'Adri allait me catcher un moment ou un autre, hein, mais... Mais voilà, je savais que je devais, euh, je devais revenir avec le moins d'écart possible pour, euh, voilà, pour, euh, pour que Cécile puisse euh, faire sa course euh, plus ou moins sereine et, et pour qu'elle n'ait pas trop à rattraper, quoi, on va dire. Et finalement, bah, mission euh, relativement accomplie, donc je suis content. Et enfin, euh, Cécile, un petit mot. Il a fallu, euh, on a senti que tu as mis un point d'honneur quand même à, à remporter cette course parce que derrière toi, euh, c'était disqualifié avec Josephine Charloun, mais on a senti que tu voulais forcément gagner. Bah, surtout, je ne savais pas qu'elle était PM, donc euh, voilà, je... Je fais ma course, elle était un peu, un peu devant moi. Enfin, j'ai pas cherché forcément à être tout le temps devant. En fait, je me suis dit, euh, je fais ce que, ce que j'ai à faire. Je trouve mes postes et puis euh, le sprint est encore long. Il y a du labyrinthe, il faut rester clair. Et puis, euh, s'il faut qu'elle aille plus vite que moi, eh ben, elle ira plus vite que moi. Euh, et puis, bon, en fait, euh, je savais pas qu'elle était PM, mais du coup, euh, en plus, j'ai été pas trop mauvaise sur la fin. Sur le, j'ai bien essayé de bétonner les, les derniers postes de la dernière boucle parce que c'est, bah, comme j'étais encore avec elle, c'était là que se jouait. Euh, la place dans, dans ma tête parce qu'en l'occurrence non mais <rire> voilà. un petit mot pour conclure vainqueur hier champion de France des clubs champion de France de relais sprint le week-end parfait et bah ouais le week-end parfait le, comme on disait tout à l'heure on est super content on n'a jamais eu des, des aussi bons résultats de club donc euh, ça montre que enfin on arrive à, à se faire notre petit trou euh, parmi les, les gros clubs de France qu'on qu a l'habitude de voir donc euh, on est super content et super fier et le tout en direct sur 8 Mont Blanc euh, chaîne d'Annecy quand même hein. Merci, merci, bravo Annecy, vainqueur et donc champion de France de ce relais sprint. Alors je vais juste retrouver Mathieu si je le vois, ouais, on va voir avec Mathieu pour conclure. Allez, on se retrouve avec Mathieu pour finir. Viens Mathieu. Mathieu, un petit mot pour conclure ce, ce direct. Euh, comme le disait Cécile, euh, vainqueur aujourd'hui, voilà, enfin Annecy est, fait partie des grands euh, de ce championnat de France et de ces, de ces clubs français. Ah bah oui, là carrément, euh, oui, ils ont montré qu'ils qu avaient une équipe, en plus c'est une équipe jeune, hein, et donc euh, attention à eux les, les prochaines années. Mais, euh, mais en tout cas, ça faisait plaisir de voir les meilleurs Français enfin réunis sur euh, ce format de course. On, on a vu hein, les, les dernières années, ce n'est pas toujours le cas. Et euh, ben, quand les, les meilleurs sont là, ben, la bagarre est au rendez-vous. Et ça fait vraiment plaisir d'avoir euh, des, des belles courses comme ça euh, en France sur un championnat de France. Bon, satisfait de ce tracé, il faudra l'analyser. Je te connais, tu en as pour une semaine au moins d'analyse. Mais comme ça, là, à première vue, en tout cas, il y a eu de la bagarre, c'est tout ce qu'on aime. Bon, en tout cas, il n'y a, a pas eu de, de gros couac au niveau de l'organisation, ce qui est toujours euh, le risque. Et, euh, et ben oui, en tout cas, on a eu, on a eu ce qu'on vou qu voulait et ce qu'on aime sur ce format-là, de la bagarre, des courses nerveuses et puis euh, des, des, petits des petits rebondissements quand même avec euh, des coureurs qui passent devant, derrière. Et puis malheureusement, euh, ben, on, évidemment, on en a parlé, hein, mais les, les PM qui font que le, le classement, euh, euh, qui, influence, qui impacte un peu trop à mon goût les, les classements, mais on en a parlé, c'est le choix de, des coureurs de, 
de privilégier le, la prise de risque et la prise de risque ne paye pas toujours. Merci Mathieu, merci à tous de nous avoir suivis sur ce direct, sur ce championnat de France de course d'orientation, format Roll Sprint, c'était vraiment un plaisir. Et puis sous le soleil en plus, c'était fantastique. On se dit à bientôt pour les compétitions internationales, on se retrouvera fin mai, début juin, avec des premières manches en Suisse et en Italie. Et puis en attendant, portez-vous bien, bonne CO à tous. Ouais, et on vous retrouve et on espère que vous serez là, nous on se régale toujours à vous, à vous montrer ces, ces courses et de la course d'orientation à la télé. Merci à tous, ciao bye bye, bonne journée.